This viscast is about capacitance, voltage and charge and combinations of capacitors. Pause the video and read through the question carefully. Now that you've read through the question, let's begin by interpreting what the question is really about. It should be clear here that the question has given us some capacitors connected in a particular way and is asking about the stored charge on these capacitors. In particular, which one of these capacitors has the largest charge stored on it when 12 volts is applied across the entire combination. So we will clearly need to use the relationship that must exist between charge, Q, voltage or potential difference, V, and capacitance, which has the symbol C. And also we're going to have to worry about the combinations of series and parallel capacitors, which we can see in this combination here. We have two capacitors in series uh, that are also in parallel with a third capacitor there. Moving on to the development stage of the solution, and in fact for this particular problem it's possible to solve the problem and answer the question simply in the development stage, although we will go on to the evaluation stage just to double check that our reasoning works. Uh, to start with in a development stage, it might be useful to give some labels to some of the properties here. Let's, for example, call this capacitor C1, this capacitor C2, and this capacitor C3. That will allow us to write combinations. And let's not forget that there is a 12 volt potential difference across this entire piece of circuit. Now, the relationship that we need to remember is that the charge on a capacitor is the capacitance times the potential difference or voltage. So when we're trying to evaluate which one of these capacitors has the largest charge, it's going to be the capacitor that has the largest product of capacitance multiplied by voltage. How are we going to try to understand that? Well one thing to recall is that when capacitors are in series, they have the same charge on each capacitor. You might want to go and check with your notes to understand the physical reasons why that's the case. But the charge on capacitor 2 must actually equal the charge on capacitor 3 because they're capacitors in series. So what we really want to determine now is Q2 or Q3, the same value, is that bigger than Q1, the charge on capacitor 1, or is it less than Q1? So in fact we may have two capacitors here that both have the, the larger charge on them. Or it may be that capacitor 1 has the largest charge. We can think now of a simplified version of the circuit that we're given because we can think about the two capacitors that are in series as having an effective capacitance here that we might call C23. Those two capacitors in series can be thought of as effectively one in parallel with our C1 here. That combination C23 has 12 volts across it, the same as capacitor C1 because things that are in parallel always have the same potential difference across them. So here we can see that V1 will equal V23, as we'll call it here. And in fact it's, as indicated in the question, 12 volt is the potential difference across each of those parallel branches. The larger charge here, Q, will be the branch that has the larger capacitance C, because they've both got the same voltage V here. So we just need to think about which one of these branches will have the larger capacitance. So this tells us, remember, that larger C um, gives larger Q. And that's what the question is asking us to find, which of these capacitors has the largest charge. C1 equals 5 microfarads, as indicated in the diagram. C23 is the combination, the series combination, of C2 and C3. Now I need to also recall that when I add capacitors in series, what I do is I add the reciprocals. It's a bit like adding resistors in parallel, if you know what that means. So that means that 1 over this combination C23 is actually 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. That's what we mean by adding the reciprocals. Importantly, what that always means is that when you add two capacitors in series, the overall capacitance of the combination is less than either of them. So in fact, if I've got a 2 microfarad capacitor, 
in series with a 3 microfarad capacitor, the total capacitance of that combination will be less than either of them. So it'll be less than 3 microfarads, it'll be less than 2 microfarads. So I can see that C23, whatever it turns out to be, I'm not doing a calculation here, I'm just thinking about how these things combine, C23 must be less than 2 microfarads, which of course means it's less than C1. C1 we know is 5 microfarads. So we can see immediately here that C23, the capacitance of that arm, is less than C1, which means that there'll be less charge in the branch that has C23 because it has the same voltage, 12 volts, but a smaller capacitance. So we can see immediately here that Q1 will be the largest charge. And as I mentioned, we haven't done a calculation here. This is a question where we can just be careful in our application of our understanding of the problem and actually come up with a solution. It didn't ask us to calculate the size of the charge. It just asked us which one had the largest charge. And it turns out it's going to be C1. But let's move on to an evaluation step just to confirm our understanding in the development stage. Giving ourselves some more room, let's do an evaluation stage. We can calculate Q1 quite straightforwardly. It's going to be C1, V1. And we know the capacitance of C1, it was 5 microfarads. And we know the voltage across C1, it was 12 volts. So doing that combination there gives us 6 by 10 to the minus 5 coulombs. That's Q1. Now, what about Q2? Well, we know Q2 and Q3 are the same. And they must be equal to the capacitance in that branch, which we call C23, multiplied by the voltage in that branch. Now, we know the voltage in that branch is 12 volts, the voltage across that branch. What is this C23? Well, above we saw how we would calculate that. 1 over C23 will equal 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. And we can do that. If we do everything now in units of microfarads, we can just do it fairly simply. C2 was 2 microfarads, and C3 was 3 microfarads. So we've got a half plus a third. Uh, there's probably many ways you can think of simplifying that, but we could, for example, add those two fractions over a common denominator of 6, and 2 would give me 3 sixths, and 1 over 3 would give me 2 sixths, so I've got here 5 sixths. Now that's 1 over C23 is 5 sixths, so I should be able to see here that C23, that combination, will be the reciprocal of 5 sixths, that is 6 fifths, or if you like we could write that as 1.2, and we did all of our calculations here in units of microfarads, so this must be 1.2 microfarads. So as we predicted in the development stage, C23 is a capacitance smaller than both C2 and C3. It's smaller than 3 microfarads, it's smaller than 2 microfarads. And now we can calculate what Q2 and Q3 are. They're this capacitance here, 1.2 microfarads, times the voltage across that branch, which was 12 volts, which when you do that calculation, comes out to be 1.4 by 10 to the minus 5 coulombs, which of course, as we predicted and as we've just shown now, is indeed less than Q1, which was 6 times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs.